Welcome to the Inside Syracuse Basketball Podcast. I'm Mike Waters. Today on the podcast, I'm joined by Symir Torrance, who recently transferred from Marquette to Syracuse. I talked with Symir about growing up in Syracuse, how he reached out to Buddy Beheim when deciding whether to transfer to SU, and the role he expects to fill for the Orange next year. Symir, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing great. And I appreciate you joining us here on the podcast. And it's it's really uh, it's really kind of awesome to have a hometown kid such as yourself uh, go away for a couple years at Marquette and now transfer to Syracuse and you're coming back home and I can only imagine how excited you and your family are. Very excited, um, unbelievable moment. Uh, we want to cherish it because uh, opportunities like this usually never happen to to hometown kids, um, and I'm just grateful for the opportunity. When you made up your mind to leave Marquette, transferring out of there after two years, uh, what went into that decision and was coming to Syracuse, going to Syracuse University at all in your thought process? Well, um, my mind was kind of already made up uh, middle of the the season. Um, I was just going through a lot of things. Uh, I just felt like I, I didn't fit there and um, it wasn't what I wanted it to turn out to be. And it just didn't, it just didn't uh, work out for me personally, individually. Um, I felt like I did what I had to do. Um, Just didn't get the results out of it, but that's fine. Uh, I definitely don't regret going to Marquette. Uh, I take it as a lesson. I met a lot of good people. Still going to have relationships uh, to this day and so on with them. So definitely glad I made that decision. Definitely glad I uh, got to learn a lot of stuff out of those two years. Um, but I, I just needed something new. I needed something better just for me uh, individually so I can look uh, towards the future. And um, the Syracuse question, it, it wasn't on my list. It, it, was, a, it was a late bloomer. Um, I was really looking into. I kind of thought maybe it wouldn't be in there because yeah. you announced that you were leaving Marquette, and Syracuse hasn't even played its first game in the tournament yet. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so they were still in the tournament. Um, and they they weren't even on my mind. Um, I'm sure I, I wasn't on their mind at the time because of their schedule and the tournament. And they wanted to focus on on them. Um, but I, I was looking at other schools such as South Carolina, UMass, Wake Forest, uh, South Florida, UAlbany, and um, Siena. um, It was three days after Syracuse lost to Houston. And uh, I was watching Syracuse's games regardless of just anything. Like I'm a fan regardless um, of where I go, just because I'm a hometown kid and I know players on the team. So I, I kind of had that love and support for anybody that I know, and I just want them to be successful. So I, I watched the games regardless. But um, just three games after the Houston game, um, I had text Buddy personally myself, and I had told him, hey, I'm interested. Um, if you guys have a spot, I, I'll take it immediately. You texted Buddy? I texted Buddy. This <laughs> was uh, three days after they lost to Houston. Um, and they were home, and then he just texted me back. Uh, it was funny because me and my ba- me and my dad were just talking about you. Um, and then soon enough, a couple of days later, I got on the phone with Coach Beheim, and then uh, had a nice chat. And he just told me, um, whatever the situation is, we just have to wait for players to transfer uh, because he knew players were going to transfer. Uh, on how the season went. He just didn't want to um, take me in right away if players didn't transfer. And obviously the players that were there are ahead of me because they already know the system and stuff like that. And I'll have to get to know the system. So he didn't want me to feel like I was a, I was going to be in the same system that I was in at Marquette. So um, he really just told me the truth of what I had to do and uh, the reason that I had to wait. And um, just soon enough that uh, the opportunity came 
And uh, I just told the Bayhai family that uh, I'm all there and I committed to Syracuse. I mean, it really did kind of happen fast. I mean, Syracuse loses to Houston on the 27th of March. Like two days later, we hear that Woody Newton and Robert Braswell are transferring out. And then I think it's one day later, we hear Kadari Richmond is transferring out. Now that's probably a move that impacted you a little bit. He's a guard. And then what was it? The 31st of March? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And you know what I was thinking, you know, in that time frame before, like you even contacted Buddy, I know the former Marquette assistant, Dwayne Killings, you mentioned you Albany's on that list. Dwayne Killings, the Marquette assistant, has gotten the head coaching job at Albany. I'm sure there was, I mean, he's he's the guy that reached out to you, right? He was wanting you to come with him. He, he knew the process. He knew what was going on, but he knew that I wanted to transfer before he, he got he even got the job. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we had, we had multiple conversations. Uh, he, uh, he told me whatever decision that I make is, is um, he's going to be right behind it. Uh, just really just looked out for me, to be honest, because he recruited me to market. Um, well, if you're looking for a, a good landing spot in a transfer situation, familiarity with somebody, you know, so whether it's either a Marquette assistant coach who's moved to a different school or coming back to your hometown, a school that offered you coming out of high school and you know you played AAU ball with half the team. <laughs> I mean, the, the, I, I can see how both of those, even though they seem very different, Albany and, and you know, and, and, and Syracuse, but uh, they share similarity in that they, they both have a, that familiarity for you. For sure. Um, I really just wanted to go to a program where I can be trusted and I can be myself. Oh, I, I can say uh, I, I wasn't really myself at Marquette. I wasn't allowed to be myself. Um, and I, that plays into the fact of why I wanted to transfer. And um, I wasn't going anywhere if I didn't know the coach if I didn't have that personal relationship with the coach. Um, so that's why the schools that I named, those are all schools that I've known the coach either, even for um, either for like longer than two years or, or just met him. But he's, um, he's a relationship guy who has like, who has a good relationship with my AU coaches or my my uh, high school coaches. So there's some t sort of relationship that went into this process. And I wanted to pick um, a program, a school where I had the best relationship with the coaches. Now, you said a little something there about Marquette that you didn't feel like you could be yourself. Was Is that an on-court thing or a role that they that you weren't able to play the role that you would hope for? Or was that an, an off-court Thing. Uh, definitely an on-court thing. Off-court, uh, I had no problem being myself, no problem smiling and, and making new friends and, and just um, and just learning from everybody. I had no problem off the court. Um, on the court, yeah, like, like you said, I, I wasn't able to be myself. I wasn't able to show the talents that I, I strive of ever since I was a little kid. Um, my, my, uh, my dictation, my my passing ability, my um, my floor generation, I wasn't able to, to um, cherish that or or even show that, and I didn't have that that strong relationship with the coach. Um, I mean, I still I still love Coach Coach, uh, coach Wojo. Um, we just kind of went our separate ways and. Um, so was that like um, what you wanted to play more point guard and you were off the ball or you wanted to do something like, you know, something, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Fill that part in a little bit for me. Well, I just, I just really wanted to have more time. Um, I mean, it wasn't like we were winning at the time and, and I, I wasn't getting a lot of time. We were actually losing and uh, we had multiple conversations with the coaches individually as a team and changes said they were going to be made, but changes really didn't happen. 
Okay. So that's why I was so confused because when when something goes wrong, usually you look back on it and you you want to try to fix it. And I I feel like we didn't we didn't do that at Marquette. Um, I know it was a tough year there. Yeah. I mean, like the high spot was beating North Carolina in Chapel Hill, right? Oh, that that was wonderful. That was, wonderful. <laughs> that was a that was a wonderful moment. At least I got. At least I got to say I'm one and zero against Roy Williams. So, <laughs> um, this is where I get to remind Simir, or maybe tell him because he didn't know that uh, I'm a North Carolina grad. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. <laughs> so make all the jokes you want. You're one and zero. Yeah, I'll take that one and zero spot. <laughs> yeah, I got. I bet you will. Well, you know what? You're going to get more chances to play in Chapel Hill now that you're at Syracuse and in the ACC. For sure. For sure. Which is still weird. You were at you were in the Big East and Syracuse wasn't in the Big East. Now, you're coming to Syracuse and we were just talking about roles and stuff at, at Marquette. Now, now, Kadari Richmond leaves Syracuse because I'm not sure, but, you know, I'm imagining he wasn't super happy in his role or whatever. What role do you see yourself in? Uh, at Syracuse over the next year, two years, you know, that you're, you know, why did coach Beheim tell you that you're like, yeah, I'll sign up for that. I can come in and do that for you. Well, like I said, relationships was a big key and why, why I chose this, this program and this school and why I came back to my hometown. Coach Beheim and GMAC and coach Autry, they, they grew up watching me play. So they know the real Simon Torrance. They know what I can do. They know what I, what I'm not really good at, but they know my game. So why not come back to the hometowns if uh, the whole coaching staff is invested in you and, and knows your game and as as well as the players. Like I played with Joe and Buddy um, my entire life. So they, they know my game as well. Um, my role is to simply come in, uh, follow them, don't, don't come in and um, – Try to be something that I'm not. Uh, be myself. I'm a, like I said, I'm a floor general. I like to get guys involved. I can score whenever I when I can. I see the floor very well, and um, I'm just a very. Uh, I have a strong nose of winning. Uh, I want to win, so whatever that takes. Um, let me let me throw something in there. You, you talk. You mentioned being a floor general a couple times already in this conversation. 82 assists and 41 turnovers, a two to one assist to turnover ratio in your two years at Marquette. That's really good, especially, you know, when, when you're playing about what, 15 to 18 minutes a game. For sure. You don't see a lot of, you know, point guards in, in that amount of time have that solid two to one assist to turnover ratio. That's excellent. Yeah. Um, I mean, I always had that in my game ever since I was a little kid. Uh, honestly, never really cared about scoring 50 or 40 or 30 points. It wasn't really on my mind. I wanted to be that that guy on the floor that got everybody else involved and made everybody else happy. Um, that's the kind of guy I am. So. Uh, we, we, we talked about you coming home and stuff to Syracuse. I want to get into that a little bit. Uh, you grew up in Syracuse. What, 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 what are your parks? Where are your parks? in Syracuse where did you play ball as a kid or or is there a is there a which gym which gyms were yours um I mean I, I kind of played throughout the whole city uh I live down the street from Kirk Park so I was just, I was always around there a lot uh I trained at Higher Park mm -hmm. um Thornton Park was a park that I grew up playing Pop Warner football in oh that's a uh, that brings back memories and that's, that's right on campus. So. Yes, it is. I mean, I've heard stories of back in the sixties, Dave Bing and guys like that going over and playing folks at Thorndon and pickup games. Yeah. I don't think we're going to recommend you do that while you're at Syracuse. <laughs> that, that, that's frowned upon now. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned Kirk Park. Uh, I was thinking immediately there, Pop Warner, because uh, Kirk Park's got a really strong Pop Warner program, don't they? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, like I said, this life is all a form of relationships. And I, I knew a lot of people that went to um, 
knew a lot of coaches that went to Thornton Park, which was the team was called Sherman Park at the time. Okay. So I knew the coaches, and my family, my parents knew the coaches. So I felt like I was at a good spot. And you went to SAS, Syracuse Academy of Science. Yes, I did. I know you left and you went off to Vermont Academy for a year, but uh, what was the experience in high school like at, at Syracuse Academy of Science? Um, it was good. Uh, uh, a long fifth grade to sophomore year. Um, it just went by pretty fast, I can say. I, I mean, I started off playing JV in seventh grade and then moved up to the varsity in eighth grade. Um, basketball wise, made it to the championship all, all three years of my varsity career. Never really got the chance to cherish or get to win the um, section, section three title, but uh, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of still kind of mad about that, but um, I could tell you you started slowing down. <laughs> but um, my SAS moments and they were they were really good. I'm yeah. I'm glad I went there. I'm glad my uh my parents put put me in that school. You held a Syracuse offer coming out of uh, high school or back in high school, and I remember. You got that offer at the elite camp. You went up to Syracuse. You were at the Mellow Center. You didn't have an offer, but they invited you to elite camp. And I remember you telling me you had a little bit of a chip on your shoulder going into that elite camp. You wanted to earn an offer. I did. I wanted to. Um, that was that was the goal. I was I was really to go to go in there and um, and show show the Syracuse staff uh, what they what they've been hearing over the years and over the summer. And um, I just wanted to prove that I could play at that level. And uh, and that camp, that camp I obviously did because um, me and Coach Beheim had a talk. I still remember that talk. It was really, it was after the whole camp was done. Uh, he just kind of pulled me aside and, and just told me, hey, you can come here if you want. Uh, and that was, that was basically it, to be honest. Were you but, like, wait, wait. Was that an offer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't really understand it as well, but I kind of knew what what words he was uh he was trying to say. But it was it was unique. It was a it was a special moment for me. Now you didn't your mom go to that? Wasn't she up there watching the games that day? She was there, wasn't she? She's always there. She's always there. She All right. There. So when you when you two get outside the Mellow Center, I mean, when when did you tell her? Hey. You know, Coach Behan just offered me. Or, you know, what, what was, or you know, how did how did that go? Were, were you still in the gym? I, I, you the I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't wait until we got outside. I told her inside. I, I didn't wait. I didn't wait. Uh, there was a, a bunch of City Rock guys around, and my mom was there. Um, and after I had to talk Coach Behan, and I told her immediately, like, "Hey, mom, guess what? Um, take his just offer, and you could just see like the." my mom's whole expression in her face and how proud she was of me. Um, I think she did want me to go to Syracuse from the jump. Yeah. I didn't really pick up on that until later, but. Yeah. Um, and then pretty soon after that, there's a lot of guards at Syracuse. Like, cause you reclassified, you, you, you had reclassified and then you went back to your original class. And that put you in the same year as Bryson Goodine and Joe Girard, right? Jalen Carey's one year ahead of you. I can see why you're like, wait, that's a lot of guards. Exactly. Exactly. Not not everybody really noticed that at the time. Um, and Marquette was a great opportunity to play behind Marcus Howard and Kobe McEwen and all the guards that were already there before me. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was a spot for me at Marquette. So – that's why I really just chose Marquette. Uh, I felt like it wasn't really a spot at Syracuse, knowing that you have two freshmen coming and then you also have two, two soon to be veteran guards that are still going to be there, but they, they ended up transferring out. So, I mean, it ended up working out for me at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> long term, and I'm happy. You played AAU ball with Joe and Buddy. And I know you've, you've seen Buddy play. At what point, at what age, what class 
did you think, yeah, Buddy's going to be pretty good in college? <laughs> oh, man. I, I knew he was going to be good. Uh, when was this? This was this was early. Like this was like this was like our early high school year. So I want to say freshman and sophomore year. Like I knew Buddy was gonna be good because he had the work ethic. Um whenever somebody has the work ethic, whenever somebody just has that drive to just work each and every day, no matter the result, and and not kind of get big headed of of who you are and the situation. You're gonna, you're gonna be, you're gonna be good. Um, so I mean, you be a recruiting me, analyst, man. You were on board way earlier than most folks. Yeah, me, me and my family, we knew who Buddy was gonna be and, and turned out to be, and now is uh, getting that shine, and he deserves it. He deserves it more, um, just because of the work he puts in every day. Uh, it's extremely incredible. Um, He's nothing. He's just a hardworking kid. Uh, you expect that out of him if you if, if you knew if you knew him for a long time. So, with a sweet jumper. With a sweet jumper. Okay. <laughs> now, you know another guy you're going to be playing with at Syracuse is a guy who's like you. He's transferring to Syracuse, but you saw and played against him in the Big East, Cole Swider of Villanova. I also played against him at a uh, prep school. Oh, that's right. He would have been at uh, St. Andrews when you were at Vermont Academy. Yep. Um, All right. So tell us about Cole. He's, I mean, great, great guy. Uh, we got to know each other throughout throughout uh, the AAU because we played them. Played for the ABC, I want to say. Um, and City Rocks, City Rocks played them a lot, so I, I got to know him then, and then I got to know him a little bit more in prep school. Uh, and then it carried on to the Big East. He was at Villanova, and I was at Marquette. Uh, three, three strong years of just playing against each other. So we we knew we know each other. We know each other's a game like a little bit. Um, he's a he's another great great player coming in. Now shoot the heck out of the ball, and I can't wait to get an assist from him. Yeah, let's see now. We you you got a guy in Cole Swider who makes about forty percent of his threes. You got a guy in Buddy Bayheim, who like in the last twelve games of the season was making forty seven percent of his threes. Joe Girard shoots it fairly well. Uh, you got some other guys on the roster. This has got to be heaven for Simeer Torrance. <laughs> Those eighty two assists and and forty one turnovers at Marquette. Gonna go up. Gonna improve. Yeah, right. Go up. I go up. Uh, it's nothing like playing with a bunch of uh, players who can shoot the ball um, at a high, consistent rate too, as well. Uh, like I said, it just kind of evens out uh, and, and takes away Buddy's um, his energy. Uh, he had a lot of spent a lot of energy uh, trying to score the ball last year a lot. Um, because of what was on the floor. And now you kind of get to balance it, kind of balance it out because of Coach Swider and Joe and me on the court, making um, making the reads and, and giving them the ball in, in their best situations. Now, you're finishing up your spring semester courses at Marquette, even though you're back here in Syracuse, right? Finishing up online? For sure, yes. How, how soon are you uh, able or allowed by the NCAA or whatever to get up to Syracuse and start working out with the team, both in the, like in the weight room or in the gym? Um, June 7th is the date. Okay. June 7th. Looking forward to that? It's coming. It's uh, slowly arriving. I, I believe it's taking too, it's taking too long. I want to get there now. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's uh, slowly coming. I can't wait. I'm, I'm anxious. The month of May is going to be a very long month for Simeer Torrens. Yeah, and uh, the crazy thing is, my birthday is June second, so I'll, I'll enjoy that as well. So I'm also looking forward to that. Get your birthday in, and then boom, you start. Start at SU. Um, 
it's got to be pretty cool. I mean, when you announced that you're coming to Syracuse back on March 31st, three days after first texting Buddy Bayheim, <laughs> which I still find hysterical, um, what did you and your family do? Did you celebrate? Well, the crazy thing is, like I said, it was last minute, and my family didn't even know. Um, I kind of kept it a secret, to be honest. I didn't want it to. I didn't want it to get over somebody's head or just expect something other, other than that. Uh, I wanted it to be right, and then that was my main focus. So I didn't want to tell anybody. I didn't want to jinx it. Uh, what? I did. I did it. Uh, the day that I told my family. What it did, I told my my little brother and my my mom and dad because they're in the house with me. Um, was the day Coach Beheim called me. I didn't tell them about the conversation with Buddy. Um, I just told them about the conversation me and Coach Beheim had. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You're sneaky. A little bit. <laughs> I, like to, I like to keep secrets. <laughs> <laughs> all right well that's fair that's really cool you kind of kept it under the radar yeah all right but still what was your mom and dad's reaction when you told them yeah it was a big smile on their face really? big, yeah it was a big smile on their face they didn't really say too much they didn't want to say too much but i i can see the the, the feeling and just the energy without them even saying anything, how proud they were of me and uh, how happy they were just because they just wanted us. They just wanted me to be happy. And they knew I weren't, I wasn't really happy at Marquette and they just wanted me to be really happy at the place that I was going to next. Well, what do you think it's going to be like next fall when hopefully fans are back in the stands at the Carry Dome and you get to come out of that tunnel for the first time wearing orange? It's going to be incredible. I might cry. I might tear up. Honestly, my tear up. Uh, but when I come out of that time, I'm, I'm, my first word is going to be just thanking God for this opportunity. Um, I got to cherish him. I got to cherish it because he's given me a lot of opportunities and I'm, I'm nothing but blessed. I'm, uh, I'm happy for you because it seems like you're really uh, happy and content uh, with the decision and, um, I, I wish you well over this next couple of years. And thanks for joining us on the podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks.